There's no question that the speed of business continues to increase. Meeting customer expectations for real-time inventory and order information, fast delivery or even same-day delivery, better customer service, all of this requires moving at a speed that places extreme pressure on a company's systems, processes, and value chains. There's also a tremendous pressure to increase process speed in order to improve top-line revenue, respond to customer and partner demands, and reduce costs. For many companies, the infrastructure just isn't there to support this level of speed and responsiveness. This underlying need for speed is one of the main reasons why companies are investing in their B2B integration initiatives. In fact, according to Aberdeen Group Research, the number of leaders engaging in a B2B integration initiative has more than doubled in percentage over the last few years. These B2B integration initiatives are about much more than automation and cost reduction. They're focused on removing barriers and improving communication and collaboration between suppliers and customers. This is not only to meet customer expectations, but to improve processes, minimize delays, and ultimately improve visibility across the supply chain. All of this drives strategic advantages. Let's explore much more deeply. I'm here with Brian Ball, Vice President and Group Director of Aberdeen Group Supply Chain Management Research Practice. Brian has over 30 years of supply chain, operations, and technology experience in industries including retail and wholesale. Brian, based on your research, what's driving the need for improved B2B integration and collaboration capabilities? Sure, Lori. As you mentioned, the underlying pressure of more speed uh, manifests itself in several ways across the supply chain. Our research indicates that companies you know, across industries are driven by basically greater visibility, and visibility is easy to talk about, uh, but what does that really mean? And it's the need for upstream uh, uh, supplier visibility to execution in the supplier supplier so that you really can understand what the what the potential for disruptions and you know getting a handle on cost and uh, better serving the customer with um, good promising information when it comes to uh, committing inventory so it calls for better connectivity and, and higher collaboration with the suppliers um, escalating customer service demands one of the top pressures that we see and a lot of that comes from the new customer, okay? Mm -hmm. That's one of these that um, you really have to understand uh, what the new customer is doing to drive you. And across multi-channels, the need for real-time inventory visibility, um, all those pressures and the need to make accurate and timely commitments um, and definitely deliver, definitely a driver behind the overall visibility challenge. So all the pieces because of the new customer committing to the to the actual promise date and, and sometimes same day, next day delivery, um, those are the pressures that are driving sort of that, that, that escalation in customer service. Okay. So, um, Next is reducing costs. Uh, across the supply chain, it's always number one or two. Um, that uh, as the complexity increases, costs increase. So not a real surprise there, but um, in addition to that, it's, it's also about taking down the inventory. Okay. What do I need to do to, to sort of uh, eliminate that in, in conjunction with uh, you know reducing the cost, then then I'd say next behind that would be the the need to improve the top line growth. That's truer more for the leaders and the followers. The leaders are are satisfied with their position. They're trying to get more out of it, be more efficient. The followers they're still not satisfied. They're still trying to become they're, you know they're they're Avis versus Hertz. They're mm -hmm. trying to be number one. Okay, and then the complexity. The the complexity certainly is, is um, a challenge as you look at not just upstream to your supplier, but the supplier supplier. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I could be in other countries when I'm looking for this, and the systems just aren't there. So getting that information to flow all the way through so I've got that visibility, so I can make those commitments that are reliable. That's the challenge. And you hit on something really important here. In increased complexity is a key issue that we're seeing all over the place. And there are many external and internal factors that are contributing to it, and some of them you, you started to address there. You know, first, we're seeing that the number and the diversity of companies in a business partner community really continues to increase. In fact, research for IBM indicates that the average company has around 500 partners and suppliers in their network, and that number just keeps growing. 
and as companies expand geographically, as you said, and also have a need to find lower cost producers and suppliers, their number of suppliers just continues to increase, as well as the logistics network that, that's needed to support them. And then as the push for better upstream supplier visibility continues, companies are needing visibility into their supplier suppliers, as you said. And this is driving the need for more sophisticated B2B integration tools that support a wider, wider variety of protocols and document formats. And in fact, uh, IBM did a study, and the typical organization needs to manage at least 10 different data formats wow. for B2B integration. And uh, on top of that, there's the volume discussion. The, many companies are faced with managing just a rapid growth in data volume and larger file sizes. We all talk about big data. Um, many of them not only have to handle that, but then transform it into a variety of different formats to meet all types of different requirements, mm -hmm. whether that's internal customer or, or even their partners. And then, as you know, which we haven't really discussed, is just the, the government uh, regulations and the industry mandates. Uh, companies have to support the multiple and changing standards that are part of that. Uh, an IBM survey actually found that 71% of organizations deal with new or changed standards at least once per quarter. That's yeah, amazing. It's, it's incredible to try to keep up with that. And, and uh, one of the things that we'll be talking about a number of times today is because organizations are moving more systems to the cloud, they're dealing with processes that are spanning multiple systems, multiple organizations, and even different deployment models. Uh, so there's just so much to consider, and uh, as you know, continuing to try to use manual processes and spreadsheets, as a lot of companies are doing, it really puts the companies at risk. Sure. And Brian, did, did you have anything you want, want to add to that? Well, just let's just, just, just take your number of 500 for a minute um, in terms of number of suppliers. So the network effect is if I have to get to my supplier suppliers, and they've got 500, well, let's just yeah. let's just say they only have 10. Right. So the number goes from 500 to 5,000 that I've got to have information about, uh, you know, if I really want to see upstream all the way to the source, which may be the case in terms of raw material or in uh, other countries. So um, that's, that's phenomenal. Then you add to that all the, the multiple formats that, and the frequency with the change. You know, that's kind of astounding to keep up with that. Uh, I mean, most people, implementation of a new change, trying to get that done alone within three months, let right. alone take on a new one, is, is uh, pretty profound. So. Um, I would say the, the one thing that is the, uh, probably a driver here is understanding what the requirements are, you know, it, it's not just the how to get things done, but what's got to be done. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the challenges is you can get lost with the, with the multiple um, touch points and, and, and realize that uh, you really have to understand the business case. So rather than chase everything, it's chasing the right things, and I think right. that's kind of the point. And then the underlying, uh, you know, concept of speed with which you've got to actually respond to that. So um, I would say that one of the, the concerns is that um, the flow of information, particularly engaging with an ERP system, is is I've got to tie all those pieces back to sort of within my four walls, but I've got to get beyond my four walls to get that information, and that's really right. the concern. Um, so level of integration across um, all platforms is, is one of the, the, the real keys, and it's, it's not the same. So, in other words, I, I need some things in real time, some things I need, I can do them in batch, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not required, I've got to have, you know, speed of light, so to speak, but many things are. So the decision support data is really the key, and it begs the question, um, when you talk about B2B integration, this is the point I really want to focus on, is that do I really have the applications that allow me to integrate the right information, okay? For example, I may find that I'm trying to improve my B2B collaboration, but I just don't have the tools to, to leverage it once I get that collaboration set up. So right. do I really have those, those applications in place? Do I have the right tools? Do I need to do both? Do I need to sort of accelerate the collaboration and also accelerate or change or modify or improve my applications to start with? So. Right, right. So um, next, I think just uh, we're going to expand upon a lot of these areas here today, but uh, let's move on to discussing your research about what the leaders are doing uh, that you brought up earlier extremely well versus what the followers are doing and where the leaders are focusing their efforts and achieving the greatest impact. Um, great point, and I think that let's start with um, the visibility, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's just address maybe the number one pressure. Um, reducing or improving that visibility to reduce inventories, um, the, the top strategic action we see uh, is that 
if, if companies were to improve their visibility, they could reduce their inventories by somewhere in the 16 to 20 percent range. In other words, they hedge. If I can't see right. that the, the initial or, or the gut level action of a planner is to hedge. In other words, that you, can get, you can get beat up for having too much inventory, you get fired if you don't have enough, right. okay? So that's the issue that they're dealing with. So that's the first thing. And, and um, the other thing I would point out is when you've got extra inventory, it, it increases latency. Um, you know, time equals inventory in the supply chain. So any time that you've got extra inventory, I'm, d I'm generating false signals, mm -hmm. okay? So that's false priorities to the floor and to the suppliers if I get excess. So reducing that inventory is, is paramount, not just for the visibility itself, but also for the improvement in the speed. So it's all, you know, really it's, it sells two birds or, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm solving two problems at one time. That's what I'm trying to get to. So. Another key area of emphasis is the um, customer collaboration. Leaders are 61% more you know, engaged or, or likely to involve their customers in a collaboration effort. And by that I mean they're, they're talking to them not just about you know, what's in the discussion. Everyone talks to their customer, but what are they talking about? And so in this case we mean you know, uh, what, collaborating on forecasts, collaborating on inventories, collaborating on fulfillment. You know, that, the best in class are trying to solve the front end and again get back to addressing this demand for increased improvement service mm -hmm. improved service if you will that we talked about in the pressures and so you know having a collaboration effort on the customer side you know we just see that you know the the, the leaders are going after that you know much more so than the, than the followers are um the other thing is i would say the leaders are also tying the upstream procurement processes you know, in the supply chain and the downstream processes together in one stream and an end-to-end -end process flow. And uh, this eliminates a lot of the manual um, handoffs. And, and again, the handoffs between apps are what cause the latency in the process. Uh -huh. If I can integrate those things and have it flow seamlessly, then, then uh, I, I've taken time out of it. I've taken the inventory hedges out of it. And, you know, if I can get that information, um, you know, within almost real time, then, then I've got something going. Um, and, and people ask, you know, so how much, you know, inventory do you need? And I say, well, the good, good place to start is start at zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason stores were invented is because you can't make something in every place in the world. You have right. to have some inventory. So when people want food or they want something, they've got to have some, some availability. So start with zero and only add where you have to. That would be my... Thank you, Brian. And as your research indicates, there are many challenges a company must overcome in order to achieve this. And we will discuss this in our next segment. Mm -hmm.